You lot must know by now how much I love a new whiskey, and this one is very interesting indeed. Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. So those of you that saw my last video may have spotted that it was an April Fools. Some of you got it, some of you didn't. So as I said, this week we have something very interesting indeed. This is the King's Inch Glasgow Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Uh, I'll, get, I'll go through the stats a bit first because then I've got some quite cool information about this one. So this is a no age statement whiskey distilled by who knows, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, it's obviously called The King's Inch. It is a lowland. It is bottled at 46% ABV. It comes in a 70 centiliter bottle. It is unchill filtered. It is all natural color, or so I could find, I mean, it does state on the bottle that it's unchill filtered. And I can only really find anecdotal stuff saying that it's, it's all natural color. Um, I did look on their website. Again, specifies that it's unchill filtered. Not that it's natural colour, but I've heard that it is, so we're going to assume that it is. It is completely unpeated. It has been matured in first fill bourbon and first fill Oloroso sherry butts. And it is just under £40, I believe, right now on Master of Malt. It is £39.99, but you can get it for about 45 quid directly from the website. This is a release from the Courageous Spirits Company. Some of you may know them for their Glaswegian range of gin. This seems to be their first kind of attempt at a Scotch single malt whiskey. So the recipe for this was originally conceived by the late Dr. Jim Swan. For those of you that don't know Jim Swan, I think it's probably arguable that he is one of the biggest contributors to modern Scotch malt whiskey development. So. This is a fairly big deal, you know, amongst whiskey drinkers, I guess. For those of you that know who Jim Swan is, to be honest, he warrants his own episode in and of itself. So that's something we may do in the future. As for the distiller, this was distilled. Well, that recipe was then passed on to a guy called Dr. Jack Mayo. Now, at the time when this was distilled, Dr. Jack Mayo was the master distiller at the Glasgow Distillery which may give us a rough idea of where this spirit was distilled. The name is pretty cool. It is on their website. They, they tell this story of it's fat, but three fat barley corns laid end to end is a king's inch. Um, there is also an island in the Clyde just outside of Glasgow called the king's inch. Uh, inch being the kind of Scots word for a small island. Pretty cool stuff. Everyone loves a good story. But let's get on to tasting it. So the first thing you notice is it is incredibly light in color, which kind of leads me to believe that maybe it is natural color, because if you're gonna put some coloring in it, you're probably gonna make it a little bit darker than this. But anyway, on the nose, very light and sweet. Wisps of lemon, like lemon zest, lemon rind. Apples, pears, kind of quite a classic space side front end on the nose. It's got like a slight vanillary cakiness to it. Like, I think I've said this before, those Mr. Kipling like lemon drizzle cakes. It's kind of got a lot of that going on. On the tail end, some spiciness, some cereal notes coming through as well. A little bit more of a savouriness, almost like a, I really want to say a sausagey smell. Like when you, you can smell sausages cooking first thing in the morning, but it's very subtle. Yeah, nice spiciness. So it kind of starts off very light, sweet and bright, quite lemony, and then kind of goes through and develops into a slightly more savoury, spicier nose. Onto the palate. Very light in texture. Wonderful tropical notes coming through. Bit of pineapple, a little bit of passion fruit maybe mango, kind of traditional tropical fruit juice flavors. Got a wonderful sugary sweetness 
similar to demerara sugar like a quite a nice quite quite a nice kind of toasty sugar note some really nice barley notes developing as well some barley sugar and a nice cerealness cerealness a nice cereal kind of flavor coming through nice and warming it's starting to get a little bit spicy now as well some of those baking spices coming through a little bit of cinnamon maybe a little bit of cardamom maybe a touch herbaceous as well on the finish wonderful vanilla notes as well that cereal notes really kind of start to sing bit of a chocolatiness maybe on the tail end of it like a really nice french pastry kind of note coming through really nice long finish as well maybe a bit of like a, a dairy buttercream flavor coming through generally you know this whiskey kind of starts nice and bright nice and light and as it as it develops it tends to get a little bit spicy a little bit richer upon revisiting A lot more of those Oloroso notes coming through now. Almost a bit of a virgin oak thing going on as well, like a little bit peanutty maybe. But generally, it's a, it, I mean, it's it's got a really nice evolution to it. Starts really bright, gets spicier. Some nice cereal notes coming through as well. This isn't hiding behind like a ton of complex cask flavors. This is a very upfront whiskey, but it's very very nice. So what do I think of this? I absolutely love it. It is delicious. You can tell it's a young whiskey. There's no getting around that. It has got a little bit of a spiritiness to it, but it's, it, to my palate, this come, this tastes like it comes from a really, really good quality new make, a really nice, sweet, bright new make spirit. Because while those new making notes are kind of shining through, if you know what to look for in a new make spirit, they're shining through, but not in a bad way. It's delicious. I would say this is very much to my palate anyway. These are the kind of whiskies I like to drink. But I think it would be very, very accessible. If you're into your Speyside whiskies, if you're into your lighter, brighter, fruitier whiskies, this is gonna be great for you. This is not something you've really gotta kinda of sit down with and you know work through. You can you can tan this very, very easily. And at 40 pounds or around the 40 pounds mark. I really don't think you're going to be able to find much for much cheaper that's going to give you this kind of palette. I mean, the, I've, I find this quite similar to like a Glen Cadham. I've got the um, uh, their 15 year old uh, um, Oloroso finish. I can never remember what it is. I'll put a link to it down below. But uh, it, it's kind of like that. I find a lot of the Glen Cadams have got that nice, bright, uh, lemony, tropical note going on and this is very much the same but this is just a little bit richer i'd uh, i'd recommend going out and buying this i think if i remember correctly it was a limited run of about five thousand bottles i'd have to check but i don't think they made a lot of them i think there's only five thousand bottles or so and at that price honestly pick one hey grab two i'd really like to see if this kind of this outfit bring out any more whiskies because quite honestly i'm a big big fan of this but anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do drop a like down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comments if you've tried this uh, because I'd love to know what other people think. Personally, you know, I think this is great value for money. And on that note, Slanjavar.